Hey, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast, where our mission is to share business ideas, practices, and strategies while we enjoy our cup of coffee. And today is another fun episode. We are getting really amped up for our season three premiere starting in 2020. It's going to be very exciting. We've already got the new desk set up. The studio is coming together very nicely. If you're watching this on video, if you're listening, you should go check out the video because the studio is looking absolutely sharp. But we have had an incredible year all of 2019. Lots of really unique and interesting guests and uh, perspectives on the podcast this year. And today we want to have a little special episode where we count down or share our top five takeaways in no particular order, but just our top five takeaways of what we learned through the podcast this year. We're going to share that with you right after this. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. All right, welcome back. Thank you very much for joining us today. It is uh, really exciting to share this with you. It's one of the one of the side benefits through this podcast over this year that we've learned is just having some really interesting conversations with our guests and sharing concepts and theories and business strategies and ideas with our audience. But simultaneously, we have learned a lot for our business as well. So it's had some really good mutual benefits. And so throughout that process, you know, we go back and kind of review our own podcast and all of the notes that we take because it's a very massive learning experience for us. So today we wanted to share the top five takeaways. And I keep saying top five. It's not really a top five list. It's just five of the best takeaways that we felt like happened throughout the year of, of the 50 plus episodes that we were able to record this year and share with you. As we come down to the end of 2019, it's just kind of a look back to say, hey, this is what happened. We have done our top five most listened to episodes before. You can check out that episode. Um, it's a several episodes back, but uh, this one is just the five takeaways that we've had for 2019. So we're going to kind of jump into that. So since we don't have rapid fire today, we're going to jump right in. We've got some clips to share with you from uh, the five takeaways of 2019 for the Coffee Break podcast. So our first uh, our first segment is going to be back from episode 21. This was with Kurt Graves. He's been a friend of the business. He's been a friend of mine for a while now. Has really been one of these these guys that have just poured into uh, me as an individual, but our organization as a whole. Uh, a great coach and a mentor. Uh, one of these guys that really just shoots straight with you which is why we want to share this clip because this clip talks all about carefrontation and he defines carefrontation as that conversation of care but not lacking confrontation uh, he c- talks about radical candor and uh, what is the what is that one thing that's causing you to lack uh, that fear that's causing you to lack confrontation it's a really great topical conversation for any leader or really any position in life in general Here's Kurt Graves, episode 21, Carefrontation. Everybody's got some fierce conversation, some set of fierce conversations that they're not going to have, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's the truth we're not going to talk about here? That's a great question. But if you knew you had to have a fierce conversation, something full of radical candor, right? And you went in the conversation with that axis in mind, and you don't really know how to do it, you you can get that done by simply looking at the front of the person in front of you and saying, what's the most supporting thing I can tell you that you need to hear right now? Let them tell you and repeat it and listen Yeah, and repeat it and then expand on it and then follow with the next question, which is, what's the most challenging thing I need to say to you right now? And I guarantee you, if you love people that much, but my opinion is when you get when you get care and confrontation put together, it's liberating because it's really it's really what love is, mm-hmm. and love is the most powerful thing in the universe. Shame shame runs a close second, but yeah. uh, but uh, if you're loving people well, you can have a conversation like that, and they will start talking, and they will tell you exactly what you need to. A conversation you need to have with them as a leader. So, uh, just to kind of put you on the spot here, you you have a lot of conversations. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's your day to day is conversations with business owners and leaders. Fifty or so a month. <laughs> what, what is the biggest 
Mm. Um, the biggest thing that is holding people back mm. from having those types of conversations or those types of interactions with their team mm. that you that you find. Yeah. The best question in a group in these times is, what are you afraid of? And then ask the question and don't rescue. Mm. Um, and somebody may say, well, I'm too busy to have it or they won't change. And then that's just an invitation to grab them and jump down a never ending hole yeah. and see what comes out at the, see where you hit at the bottom, which is like, well, you say you're busy, but I get the feeling you're afraid of something. So yeah. if you had to name a fear, what would it be? And you can't know. People may not even know themselves. They want someone to jump down the hole with them and keep them safe while they, while they address whatever's really afraid. So, and and, and to kind of lead into that busyness, because that's a, that's an easy thing for, for somebody. Yes, yeah, we can we can jump on that pretty easy. How, what part of the busyness is a? We've put ourselves in our own kind of our own corner. Yeah, like that we can't get out of. That causes us. It's like this is a weird cycle that you yeah. can never break through. Well, so or not never, but it's it's difficult to break through. Yeah. Do you have not present company <laughs> included over here in my chair? But you know, I'm the sort of guy that could have something that's really uh, my my one of my three thing three things every day. I sit down. I say. What are the three things that I really want to do well today? Yeah, and then I have all my other to dos. And isn't it isn't it funny that I can get sometimes two weeks downstream and one thing has been at the top every day, mm-hmm. and it's usually something that's uncomfortable for me to take care of. Yeah, or something. It's created. It might not just be dis- uncomfortable relationally. I find I get stuck when I don't know how to start, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. um, so it just stays at the top of my list. But I I feel anxiety when I see it, and I start feeling guilty. And then I have a burst of creativity at the end, and then that my addiction becomes to that my my habituating behavior becomes to wait until there's too much there's lots of pressure and responding with and out of that because people say you're so creative, I could have been creative two yeah. weeks ago if you created the space yeah. for it. But I think lots hmm. of pe- I think we I think there's lots of different kinds of people and lots of different kinds of people avoid things out of fear and you have to talk with people to find out what their reasons are you yeah. can't you can't it's, it's a dangerous thing to 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 fill in the blanks for them sure with your own experience but would you would you say that because of that mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, you can categorize it as fear or whatever you want to categorize it there's something like that in in everybody, yes. leader or not, but there's something like that in everybody that's holding you back from progressing yes. in some type of an area. At least one. <laughs> so how, what is what is what is the exercise that you're going through to help people kind of unlock that so that you can be mindful? Because it's one of those things where, I mean, I could tell you probably three things right now mm-hmm. that I need to do, but... Other things have taken priority, or I've given other priority yeah. to those things, and so those have, like you said, just kind of drug on. It creates anxiety, it creates frustration, and at some point in time, it's going to explode. <laughs> you know, yeah. and then and then you have to draw. And you'll solve it, however you've solved it consistently from the time you were seven years old. Yes, which is <laughs> which is procrastination, right? It was or just the key to taking it. control of it, or or get super organized, and you'll ultimately take control of it. In a way that is patterned after your your story from the time you know it's seven, sixteen, and twenty five, right? Yeah. So, so there's a gal, Mary Lore, and I, I've never met her, but she has. I've heard this quote a million times, and I think that it applies here. She says, "Take inventory of your beliefs, opinions, and assumptions. Beliefs, yeah, beliefs, opinions, assumptions, because they are the seeds of your intent. And so the hmm. So once we have an issue, how do I blank? We have the opportunity to solve it cognitively, and we should always do that in a thorough way. But the big opportunity is where you're headed, which is how do we, how do we get a conversation going where we examine my beliefs about, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a step skipper. I mean, that's definitely something in my bag. Um, and I had another coach call me out one time and say, I was telling him I was planning on starting my second group before I had really even finished the first mm. one. And in front of all my peers, he said, um, how long have you been a step skipper? And I felt shame, and I said, I, I don't 
think I am a step skipper? And he said, no, <laughs> you, but you're skipping steps. And I, det- I, uh, I got a little bit tougher about it and he came in a little bit more tougher and loving. And um, at the end of it, about a day or two later, I woke up and I remembered a story from as a kid as a Boy Scout in a competition where you were supposed to send a semaphore message across the river. And uh, Billy Bach, who was on our team, had the brilliant idea to write the message on a neckerchief, put it in a rock, and simply throw the rock and with the neckerchief around, around the other side. And we won because we skipped steps. Hmm. And I think that was a powerful m- moment for me to gain so much approval by winning. I love to win. And, and that has impacted my behavior to this day. And so being called out on that, mm-hmm. being seen by somebody, and still being loved yeah. began the process for me to say, well, I'm afraid people aren't going to like me. So I'm like, no, Bill likes me still, even though I'm a step skipper, but he loves me enough to not let me yeah. not see it anymore. Yeah. So I think the conversations then are about what is the belief? You know, where, did, where was the event? Are there some events that led you to this belief or this opinion or assumption? And if we can examine those, then there's a way to say, I mean, Chad, you're like you're the most creative person I know. Um, you can be creative enough in this moment that you don't need to procrastinate. Yeah. What's really stopping you? What are you afraid of? Yeah. And so I think that – I'll shut up after this. History is gravity. It's a powerful gravity that that even if we've succeeded – it keeps us trapped, and and we need to not overly rely on our strengths. We need to expand and and work in our weaknesses, and that's that's what only other people can help us with that. I would definitely challenge you to go back and check out that episode. V- tons of information. There's probably four or five different clips we could share with you, but that one just really kind of stands out. So check that out. Our next clip is from episode 22. And this is one that we recorded. It was a fun experience uh, with Scott Baker from, uh, he was a former um, president, a group president in Asa Abloy and had an opportunity to, uh, to share a lot of conversations with Scott Baker over the year, uh, over the years rather. And we were in San Antonio, Texas earlier this year at a conference and I didn't realize Scott Baker was going to be there, but he showed up and we got into a conversation and I was able to convince him to come sit in, uh, in one of the, the rooms that we had set off to the side to record some podcasts. And he, he gave us about a half hour uh, of his time in the middle of lunch one day, uh, before he was getting ready to head out to the airport, literally right before he was about to head out, he sat down with us and the conversation that we had was incredible. He talked a lot about company culture and understanding how to, uh, how to cultivate a culture, but also how to care for that culture and what it actually means. So uh, this particular section of that podcast was very incredible. He was talking all about culture um, and how it uh, doesn't change, but it also is very compatible with your core values um, and understanding that you don't want to have any bullying or intimidation and there is accountability associated with it. So there's a lot of great takeaways from this episode as well, but this is episode 22, Company Culture with Scott Baker. So when you assess what the culture is and then you get to the point of going, okay, now we need to change things. What does that look like? Well, um, change things is a detail on a strategy. It's not a culture. Culture should never change. There's fundamental core values that have nothing to do with your day-to-day business strategy. And that culture should never change. Um, It can be modified slightly, but there's certain things that mean something to other people. Like I always say, the heart of our culture and my groups is a true driven competitive desire to beat the heck out of everybody else. I mean, even our sister companies. Yeah. I can tell you, we sit in those in my companies, we sit in there and we drive and we say, Sergeant outperformed us last month. That is unacceptable. <laughs> even though I've worked with Sergeant, sure. helped sell Sergeant for a long time, my best buddies are over there. Yeah, yeah. I, com- you, really competitiveness. You have to be competitive. I, I, I always say that I was more competitive with my brother than any, any man. I had, even though I love my brother deeply. When we played basketball one-on-one, man, I was just elbow in the throat if I had to. I was going to win, and he felt the same way. So at the heart of that culture, that competitiveness, well, that's not a cultural aspect that ever changes. Yeah. But I always say culture, it has to be driven competitiveness in a non-threatening environment. Okay. And the reason why I say that is I hate bullies. 
Yeah. I, I, I've never been able to accept bullies, and anybody who bullies at our company, there are basic rules at our company, which are part of the culture. There's no yelling. There's no intimidating. There's no browbeating. One employee, it's not just about a manager yelling at a, sure. at a yeah. staff member. Employee One employee, employee yeah. and, and we've lost more people because they violated that aspect of our culture. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not true at a lot of really successful companies. Yeah. A lot of really successful companies are led by bullies. Yeah. That's just a personal thing for me. So I try and live that. And because I can be a an overwhelming personality in the first place, it's really important to me that I not be a bully. Yeah. Hmm. That I not push people around and consequently no one should be. No one has ever yelled, been yelled at by me. No one has ever been sworn at or intimidated that way or threatened with their job. Um, so you have to have that, that, that uber competitiveness in a non-threatening environment, it's a hard balance to, 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 to have, mm-hmm. but you have to also have that accompanied by personal responsibility and accountability. People have to be held accountable. Sure. So if you're going to have a super competitive environment, non-threatening, that means they have to know at the end of the day, going into there, without getting yelled at, they may lose their job if they aren't able to hold up to those standards. Uh, Scott Baker is such a fun guy to talk to, and, and that voice is just incredible. But uh, Scott actually is in the middle of traveling all across the world right now. He is in in the uh, early stages of retirement, uh, travels around in the country in a motorhome, but he's also been traveling uh, overseas quite a bit. Uh, really fun guy to follow, really fun guy to get to know and have conversations with, with so many years in business and so many experiences that it's a, it's just a great person to, to connect with. That's episode 22, Company Culture with Scott Baker. Our next clip is from a recent episode, episode 48. This was Frank Schwartz. He joined us. Uh, he came to us as a recommend, recommendation from one of our friends, Justin Tebow. He said, hey, you really got to get to know this guy and, and chat with him. Uh, based off of his connection through F3. F3 is a men's uh, workout group, very interesting organization. You can check it out by Googling F3 Nation. But Frank came in as a part of that, talking about how their philosophy at F3 is leaders leading leaders. Uh, But he really dove into a lot of other insightful conversation based off of uh, his leadership development team and his leadership development business, as well as other uh, aspects of leadership in general. So it was was just a very intriguing conversation. This clip that we're going to share with you is uh, all about his training philosophy. It's uh, an acronym he uses, S-A-O-F. He'll explain to you what that means in this clip. In F3 and also in in the G3L business, like I was telling you about, is you know, we teach people is it's, I know it's going to surprise you. There's an acronym, um, but it's S A O F, right? So you've got, you, you want to give them the appropriate schooling. Okay. Right. That's the S. And then you want to provide some apprenticeship. Okay. So you want to come alongside them. Okay. Right. Put them with a master teacher or master, whatever it is, lock person. Yep. Right. You show me that cool door. Yeah. You know, so you've got some apprenticeship, someone standing there, helping them to to go through all the different things, install the different pieces and whatever those things might be, right? So we taught you how to do it in the classroom. Now we're gonna stand beside you, watch you do it. Oh, you know, quarter inch this way, whatever the criteria is, right? Yeah. Then we're gonna provide you, oh, is opportunity. Then we're gonna take you out in the field. Yeah. You know, and you're gonna install your first one. And I might not even be there. Yeah. You know, or I might be standing out in the back, you know, someplace watching from way afar and not correcting anything that you do, Yeah. right? And at some point, the F at the bottom is failure. Yeah. You're going to fail. Mm-hmm. You can do it completely wrong. Now, what do we do about that? What do we do about that? Mm-hmm. Fire you. <laughs> right? That's the right answer. Failure yeah. equals termination. Hmm. A lot of times. Yeah, that's true. Right? A lot of organizations. Unless you can figure out a way to learn from the failure. That's the hope. Yeah. You know, a lot of times. I mean, now look, installing a lock wrong one time, probably not grounds for failure. I know you run a tight ship around here, Chan, but I don't think that's it. Right? I don't think that's it. But the, the point being that no matter how many times that person fails, you know, all right, good. Now that we've learned that, now that we've been through that, what's the next piece of schooling that you need? What kind of other opportunity we need to give you? You know, whatever the thing might be, right? Yeah. So a failure doesn't have to be a terminal event. So with the leadership style from the, the G3L that you're, that you're it, it kind of a coaching type structure, is, mm-hmm. that, is that what that is? What's the purpose of it? How do you, what is what are things that can, people can identify and say, hey, that's something that I align with. That's something that I want to that I want to find how to, how to implement into my organization. I got you. So, um, the the big overarching philosophy uh, I think is the idea of creating leaders and teams within an organization, right? So you've got a a large organization all working for the same purpose. They may or may not be proximate to one another necessarily. Mm-hmm. 
And so within that, you want to develop teams to accomplish mission, yep. right? And so what we want to teach is how do we create organizations of leaders where people are empowered to act, right? Mm -hmm. Where ego doesn't play a part, where mission is focus number one, rather than self-preservation, rather than, I mean, you've, you know how it works. Mm -hmm. You work with these kinds of clients, yeah, right? Big corporate, you know, large oh, yeah. enterprise entities. And a lot of times people are just trying to carve out and figure out, okay, how do I protect my little team? Or how do I protect my little piece of the world? Or how do I not make anyone upset? Yep. Right. I just want to maintain status quo long enough to retire. Yeah. And then I will tire and then I can read you all the statistics about how you're going to die in six months because you, <laughs> you have no purpose in your life. Yeah. You know, right. So our job is uh, with G3L is to try and teach them how to, in a very F3 fashion. Sure. Right. To develop and, and maintain dynamic teams within their organizations so that they can accomplish uh, the mission that they have. So you basically go in and say, help them assess that, figure that out, define mm -hmm. it, and then work help them to, to structure it. a leadership development process, you know, in with all those different steps, but that are particular to their world. Yep. Right. Frank Schwartz was a fantastic guy. Uh, exciting to to be uh, to to have a conversation with. Just uh, very sharp, very sharp individual. And he's one of those guys that when you're around him, he, he challenges you to be better just by being around him. It was really it was really humorous to see how he interacted with some of the folks around our organization and how he challenged them to do better uh, in just a very short amount of time. So uh, just one of those incredible guys to be around. Check that whole episode out. Episode 48, Leaders Leading Leaders. Our next clip is from the uh, the vice president of the Americas Group for Asa Abloy. Um, he is uh, one of the executive vice presidents leading the entire Americas division, Lucas Baselli. And we had a really interesting opportunity for him to stop by and visit our office and see our organization. And while he was here, we convinced him to sit down and have a conversation. Uh, it was really cool to get to know him and really understand the leadership style that he has. Uh, very intriguing, very intriguing individual. So uh, this episode 39 is Lucas talking of all about leadership capacity and leadership uh, qualities that they look for within their organization and qualities that he tries to invoke in his own leadership style. He talks a lot about preparation uh, on becoming a leader, building consistency and having a positive attitude. What are some things that you would say you have done to prepare yourself for that or some things that you've learned through the process that um, have been instrumental in how you lead now? Yeah, I think one thing that I've probably been trying to, uh, to focus a lot uh, in the past few years is that I think is, is one attribute that I admire a lot, mm -hmm. which I think is consistency. Okay. So I think it's, I really value uh, the consistencies and I try to do that to be uh, consistent in during the good and the bad. Because sometimes um, you see different sides of people uh, depending on the situation, depending on, um, uh, on the timing of things. And I think a, uh, a constant leader uh, throughout uh, the, the, the different scenarios is something that we all aspire to, that sure. it can, you can keep calm during the tough times, but also uh, provide a surety when things are tough, but uh, also not be ecstatic when things are good, but give that yeah. that continuity um, and, and, and constant, because I think it's hard for somebody to not know who's showing up tomorrow. Yeah. And I think some, I think people struggle to see, you know, which character uh, of that person you, you wanna, you're gonna find out is, is 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 the person A going to show up as in a good mood, in a bad mood? Am I going to see aggressive A or defensive B? And I think knowing what you're going to find out is is something that a lot of people as, aspire to, and there's something that I always wanted from a leader. Yeah, somebody treat me the right way. Somebody that I always knew that uh, no matter what what information I was going to provide to them, there was always that consistent. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting point. I, I don't know that I've ever heard anybody put it that way before, but that is something, you know, when you talk about people in your life that are very, that have, that have poured a lot of value into you, that is something that really does stick out. Somebody that has been consistent, uh, consistently present yep. or consistent in attitude is kind of what you're, what you're referring to, or I guess it could be both, but that's, 
consistency that's a big factor that's very interesting and I th you, you said a key word that's very important to me it's attitude yeah and i think it's uh, there's a, a famous poem by charles swindle i don't know if you're familiar with that says um, in life uh, 10 percent is what happens to us and 90 percent are at our attitudes towards it yeah and it says we are in charge of attitudes and i think a lot of times we're uh, we, we spend a lot of effort energy uh, on things that we have no control yeah uh, hmm. And an attitude is something that we have 100% control over. Yeah. And I think it's, and, and you find um, in people, the people with the right attitude, the positive attitude is contagious. And I think it's, it's one attribute that uh, myself, I always look into people is, is that positive attitude. And something that I try to, to live up as well, too, is something that it, it takes work. Uh, yeah. Uh, after five days of snow, it's hard to get that positive attitude <laughs> to continue on. But sure. it, you know, how much can you control the weather? Yeah. Um, so it's it's. I think that the the things in life that you can control, uh, and attitude is one of them. I think is is a key element of 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 leadership and 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 people. All right. So that was episode thirty nine. Lucas Baselli, qualities necessary to lead. And a uh, very insightful conversation. Make sure you check that full episode out. Uh, actually, was one of the most listened to episodes this year and one of the most watched episodes this year on our video format. So be sure to check that out if you have not already. Uh, and really appreciate Lucas for taking time out of his schedule to sit with us and chat. Um, I, I really had a lot of takeaways from that that conversation that was very um uh, very inspiring to me for things that we're working on here. All right, our last clip that we want to share with you, this is from Blair Primus. Uh, he's doing some amazing things from a marketing a aspect, literally writing the book on unique marketing angles and aspects and the way that they're just completely integrating into the community. And that's where we started our conversation. But we ended up our conversation really talking about leadership and his philosophy on leadership because not only are they doing some interesting things and leading the way in some marketing attempts and some marketing aspects, he's also leading a team and in, in involving that team in leadership capacity. It was very interesting. I, I got an opportunity to sit down with uh, Blair or sit in one of his classes that he teaches about leadership, and it really opened up my eyes into a lot of different angles that I hadn't already thought about. And so he's got a lot of great insights from a leadership capacity. This particular clip, he's talking about um, the the four or the three R's rather of leadership, and he's going to share those with you right now. As you mentioned, you're leading multiple groups yep. um, of of people. Um, and a couple of things that I, I found interesting when I heard your talk last time, one of the things that, that you brought up was a philosophy that you have of recognize, reward, recruit, and report. Yep. Uh, and you tagged that with track how we work and track how we behave. Yeah. So these are some of the things that you're focused on from a leadership perspective. Talk to us a little bit about how that has been impactful and maybe some of the uh, some of the ideas that you've been able to implement yeah. around that and great. To, for results. Oh, awesome. I love it. So one of the things that I think is important and um, I know you've talked you've chatted with other folks, other guests before about this is leading an organization through change mm -hmm. is very very difficult. Mm -hmm. And what is difficult about it in my mind isn't the actual thing that's changing, it's behaving like you said you were going to. Yeah, You have different generations, different histories, different pedigrees, different upbringing, different skill set, different mindset. How do you take 20, 50, 1,000 people and all say to them, we made a pledge or we agreed that we would start to behave this way and you're not? Yeah. So mm. it's difficult to do that. People have spent 25 years in a career doing something a certain way, and you're gonna say, hey, that meeting we just had, you know the email you sent afterward? That's not the behavior we're looking for. Yeah. So that's the journey we're on now. How do we get people to behave in a way that is conducive to creating organizational change? So from that, one of the things that we try to implement, at least with my teams, is I am less likely to recognize my team for an amazing result of a digital marketing campaign mm -hmm. or the fact that we put together a document around our benefits plan really seamlessly sure. or that we have instituted a new um, onboarding orientation, the actual program itself. I will recognize them for good work done, but what I'm more likely to share, r r report and recognize on 
and socialized to the organization is how they went about getting it done. Okay. Is how they behaved while it was happening. Hey, the, 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 how you handled yourself in that meeting was more impressive than the content of the meeting. Yeah. How you behaved in front of that group of people and the words you used, I loved that more than actually what you talked about. Sure. Or the results you got from that effort, while wonderful, it's actually better how you role modeled how the project was done. Yeah. That's what I mean by recognize, report, reward. Because you can actually highlight people's behaviors as what you want to be role modeled in your organization. And if people see that that's the behavior that's getting recognition from a senior leader, yeah. then they'll want to do that too. Yeah. And that's my effort around changing behavior. Yeah. Um, we want to all do good work, we want great results. My belief is that if people start to behave in ways that help one another and behave in ways that our culture has, we've agreed upon our culture should stand for, then how can we not get great results? Yeah. We'll get the people that can get the work done. It's, it's interesting. I was listening to a podcast um, on the Entree Leadership Program, Chris Hogan, uh, mm-hmm. who's a, a big proponent of, of uh, recognition, and it was said almost the exact same thing. Whatever you recognize is what is going to get repeated. Get repeated, yep. Um, and it's very you have to be very intentional about what you're recognizing because you recognize the wrong things, you get the wrong things repeated. Right. Um, but you don't have – but I think what, what happens with a lot of business leaders is – Maybe there's a fear of what I do want to recognize because I'm I don't necessarily know quite yet what I want to be repeated. What it is, right? And then they don't do any recognition. Yep. And that's a whole mm. another mm-hmm. a whole another issue, issue that you run into you're right. because you're just basically you're not recognizing anybody by fear that you're going to highlight the wrong things. You got it. So going back to that from a culture standpoint, from an understanding of core values, from you know whatever your mission is, re- understanding what's important to the organization what's important those behaviors that you want to that's going to be starting point number one yep and then the act of recognizing it is is step number two exactly right so that was episode 26 it's called blair premise leading through change and very very eye-opening conversation be sure to check that one out as well really at the end of the day it's hard to think about one of the bad episodes, quote unquote, that we've had in uh, this year's podcast series. It has been incredible. The uh, ability for people, the the, uh, availability for people really to come in and sit with us and chat and teach us their perspectives or just talk through conversations. Uh, I have gained a lot from it personally, but I know a lot of the folks that we've been talking with that listen, some of the feedback that we've heard has been the same exact way. So uh, we want to continue to do that. And it is our entire mission and goal to share these business ideas and practices with you on a weekly basis, every Tuesday at 9 a.m. That has been our goal from the very beginning is to just learn together and create a platform where we can share that information with you. And I feel like this year, our goal, we had a very uh, a high energy goal to put out 52 episodes this year. And in a lot of ways, it has stretched us. It has challenged us, uh, made us rethink our goal. Was this actually possible? Can we actually do this? And to sit here at the at kind of the end of the year and look back, it's been very exciting to understand that uh, it took a team to do this. So a huge shout out to uh, Aaron Beaver, who came on with our team mid-year and really helped to take things up a whole nother notch, a, no, a whole nother notch on our production value. You're seeing that right now. Uh, in if you're watching the video and you're hearing it now, uh, when you listen to the audio, as you listen to some of the old clips, you can definitely can hear a difference in uh, the quality of what we're doing. A big shout out to my wife, Jessica, uh, who has helped significantly with coordinating uh, the the recordings, connecting with our guest, making sure that everybody knows what's supposed to be happening and making those opportunities as well. Chris Lowry, who's my business partner, has done a fantastic job on the engineering side. Um, He's behind the scenes a lot, pushing the buttons and making sure that uh, we have camera angles and that the information is shared uh, adequately for you. So it's been an awesome, uh, an awesome experience this year. It's taken a lot of people to do this and we've gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback and a lot of suggestions for guests. 
and we definitely appreciate that. Uh, the folks that are listening and that are connected with uh, with our organization, and those who who are not connected with our organization, are sharing unique guest opportunities and saying, "Hey, you should really talk to this person." They 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 are just uh, very much in line with what you're talking about, and it'd be a good conversation. So we definitely appreciate that and welcome that. If you haven't already, go check it out. Lockdoc.net slash podcast. All the episodes are there. You can connect with us there online. Send us a message. If you have any uh, feedback, maybe some questions that you would like, some topics that you would like to be addressed, maybe some guest uh, suggestions that you have, we definitely welcome those because uh, that is kind of our process here, always improving, trying to make things better. And we really have seen that this year. Now, as we uh, pivot and get ready for season three, it's really kind of hard to fathom the fact that we're moving on to season three. Uh, Season one of our podcast was only about 20 episodes, uh, about a half of a year's worth. Season two, we did a whole full 12 months, 52 episodes. It's been wildly incredible to see that take place. And now we're embarking on a whole new season three. And I'm excited. I've been able to see some of the previews. I've been able to see some of what's coming down the pipeline, the list of guests that we're working on, the list of topics that we're working on. I'm excited about how they're going to impact our business. And I'm excited to be able to be uh, sitting here in the chair sharing those with you every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. You can do that as well at lockdoc.net slash podcast. Make sure you subscribe every Tuesday, 9 a.m. These podcasts are coming out, and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. So check that out, and we will see you in Season 3 of the Coffee Break Podcast. To learn more about the topics discussed today and to connect with us online to hear all of the episodes available, visit lockdoc.net slash podcast. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes, and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. The Coffee Break Podcast is brought to you by LockDoc Security. We'd love to connect with you online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Just search L-O-C-D-O-C-I-N-C.